Hello and welcome to, I guess, how to contribute to an open source project. In this video, I'm going to be using wagtail.io as an example to basically contribute to the open source project. And you can follow along with me or you can watch this video and at the end, you can tinker around with an example repository if, you know, opening a pull request is either an unknown thing to you or it's still a little bit scary. Uh, but you know what? We might as well just jump right in. So what I'm going to do is open up a project that I'm already familiar with. I'm going to go to wagtail slash wagtail.io on github.com. Now we need a few things to get started. First things first, we need Git. If you don't have Git, if you're not familiar with Git, op uh, contributing to an open source project is going to be kind of tricky. Uh, so you're going to want to have Git installed on your computer and know a little bit of Git, just basic Git. Uh, and then you're going to want Vagrant and VirtualBox installed on your computer as well. Both of these are free. Both of these are provided by HashiCorp, I believe. Uh, so you're going to want to download and install both of those. And then we're going to look at the installation process here. So what we want to do is git clone this repo, cd into that new project folder, project directory, and then vagrant up. There's actually one more thing we want to do. So chances are you don't have access to write uh, new code directly to the master branch on this project, or any project really, any open source project. So what we want to do here is we want to fork this. And it's going to give you an option down here to fork it into your account. I already have it forked. And so let's just bring it over here. And it's going to basically copy the original code into your account on GitHub. And because it's under your account, it's a copy of the code. You don't have to worry about messing up someone else's code. You can basically do whatever you want here, and it's safe. You can do anything you want. Now, what we want to do here is clone this. So we copy this URL here. I'm going to use SSH. You can use HTTPS if you want. I have an SSH key already set up with GitHub. And so I'm just going to use that. And so this is in my account. And all I have to do is open up my terminal and type git clone and then paste that URL in here. And this is going to download and put all of that code on my computer. And now I can CD into this project and that matches right up here. So wagtail.io, it made a new folder called wagtail.io. And for this particular project, it wants me to use Vagrant. So I'm going to use Vagrant and follow their, their steps. It says Vagrant up. In the readme, I'm going to use Vagrant up. Now, if this is your first time using Vagrant, this can take a few minutes. It has to do a lot of downloading, a lot of installing. It's going to take a little while. You might as well go get a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, go for a quick walk around the block. Uh, just come back in a few minutes when it is ready. All right, so I actually lied. I did, in fact, have to basically install all of this. So I just went and got a cup of coffee, came back and it was done. So we have Vagrant up and running sort of on our computer and we typed Vagrant up, up to make this happen. What we can do now is if I clear this or type clear properly, I can do Vagrant SSH to get into this box. And that's right in the readme as well. Any good readme will have good installation, um, well, documentation. And so Vagrant up starts the VM. That's what we did. Vagrant Halt is going to stop the VM. Vagrant SSH is going to open up the shell in the VM. And Vagrant Destroy is going to delete the VM. So I typed Vagrant SSH just to get inside of it. Now, if you're working on another project, it might not be using Vagrant. It might possibly be using Docker or just a regular Python virtual environment or pipenv or some other layer of abstraction. Uh, moving on here, though, we have shortcuts. Within the VM, you can run manage.py to run any management command. But we have added a couple of shortcuts to save you on typing. Uh, so we can write dj command, and that basically runs the Django admin, or we can run dj run, and that's going to run the server. So let's go ahead and do this. So I typed vagrant ssh, and I went into my box, and you can see my terminal looks a little bit different. It's a little less colorful now. And what I can do is type dj run, and this should tell me I have a bunch of migrations that are missing. There we go. I have 187 unapplied migrations. Let's go ahead and basically migrate these. So if you come from a standard Django background, what I can do here is clear. If you come from a standard, standard Django background, you can type python manage.py migrate. Or because this has a shortcut, you can simply type dj migrate. It's going to do the same thing in this particular project. Not all projects, but this particular project, that's going to do the same thing. And so we're going to see it runs migrations and we run into an error. We run into a problem. We can't actually get this up and running until we solve this particular problem. So what I'm going to do here is honestly, I'm just going to take this last line 
and I'm going to copy this entire thing straight into Google, literally word for word. And this is going to either give me the exact answer or it's going to get me really close. Let's take a look at the first one here. And so what we're doing here is we're debugging this. We already know that we want to contribute to this project, but to get it installed, we're running into a problem, which in itself can be a contribution. And that's what we want here. Uh, is we want to contribute. So this is saying value error related model app.model cannot be resolved. This looks like a Django thing. Uh, we want a wagtail thing. I think this is very close, but not quite what we're looking for. So let's look at the second answer here. And this one is actually coming from github.com slash wagtail slash wagtail slash issues. This is like an official issue on the wagtail repo. This is perfect. Chances are someone has actually given some sort of answer in here. So Gasman has mentioned this before and let's see what kind of details he's running into. <laughs> Value error related model wagtail images that filter cannot be resolved. Okay, so we know that that's the same thing that that's what we're looking at. Uh, Rinty is the person who originally ran into this problem. So there's a bunch of code and Gasman has a possible answer here. And let's just keep going down and here this looks promising. Yep, changing the line this line here to this particular line should ideally fix it. May or may not, but we might as well give that a shot. We see a couple of thumbs up here. Chances are that's what we're looking for. So let's go ahead and take a look for uh, this particular line here called filter. And let's open this up. And let's open up our code in VS Code. All right, so I just opened this up in VS Code. I'm gonna make this just a touch bigger. And what are we looking for? We don't know what we're looking for yet. So let's go back to our terminal. And we know we're looking for related model wagtail images dot filter cannot be resolved. So there's some sort of error, some sort of problem in our code. And we have to look for wagtail images dot filter. So what I'm going to do here is just a global search through all of my files for wagtail images dot filter. And sure enough, if I make this smaller, this is almost exactly what Gasman had suggested to change. In fact, I think this is exactly what he wanted us to change. So let's go over here and yeah, that looks like the right thing. So let's change that to this line and paste. So I just copied and pasted and we added this line. So now at this point, we can go ahead and try to run our migrations again. DJ migrate. And I know for a fact that this is going to get stuck on something else. Uh, but this is good because this is going to be a great contribution. It says related model wagtail. Images that filter cannot be resolved. Okay, so we thought that that was going to be the solution. It's not quite. Let's scroll on down and this is amazing. <laughs> I actually don't even remember doing this. So on February 4th, I answered this question uh, a little bit. Um, so what I want to do here, I guess, is uh, if anyone ends up getting the filter model does not exist error, take a look at your migration files for get fill filter spec migrations. And do, 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 what I'm going to do is just delete that. So option number two is go in here. And uh, all I did was a, a global search for exactly what I suggested, I guess. Uh, and I'm going to delete that because that's not needed. Uh, this function is being called here. It's also being put into a, a variable called forward and reverse. Let's go ahead and delete both of those. Then because forward and reverse is being used here, let's go ahead and delete those as well. Let's go ahead and give this one more shot. Let's see how it turns out. Still doesn't work. We have some sort of issue here. Okay, let's do a little more debugging on our own. So I'm just gonna take that wagtail images.filter and I'm gonna see what's going on here. Find, and it only exists in one other place. And what this is doing, if we just read through this, and the nice thing about Python is it's it's very readable. So we have some sort of migration operation here. Migrations dot alter field. Uh, we don't want to alter this field at all. We basically did that in this one. We, we changed it from one thing to another thing. We changed it to an integer field. We don't want to change that again. We just want it to be blank and null as if it doesn't even exist. So just an empty column in our database. Let's go ahead and delete that. And let's try to run this one more time. And hopefully this works. It's going a little slower. It's taking a little longer. Oh, good. This is good news. Beautiful. That seemed to work. So what we can do now is DJ run, or if you come from a standard Django background, you can type python manage.py. Let's not add that comma in there. Python manage.py run server 
zero, port 8000. Or, because this project comes with a shortcut, we can type DJ run. And that looks healthy. So cool. Okay, so our site is basically working. Now, what we want to do is we want to take the changes that we made and push it uh, up to our repo, our version on GitHub, and then ask the original repository if it will accept our code. And so what I can do here is I can do a git status, and we can see that all my files have been changed, not all of them, but three files have been changed. I can do git diff, and this is going to show me exactly what I changed here, and this seems to be exactly what I changed. That looks healthy, that looks exactly what I did. I didn't add anything, so there's no typos. This is just a good practice, always git diff your files before you commit them. So now we can do git status once more, git add all of these, and commit this to my repository. Not the official one, but the one that I forked, the one that's in my account. I'm gonna call this migration fixes. Clear, git status, we see there's nothing in there. And let's go ahead and do a git push. And I'm just gonna push directly to master. Now, a, a better thing to actually do is, is branch off if you wanted to. branch. Uh, off of master and then you can make a, a pull request or you can open a pull request from your branch on your repo to the master branch on the master repo or the main repo rather and you can do git push <laughs> and wait for it to do its thing and if I come back to mine in here we're going to see that there's 755 commits if I refresh this 756 commits so I have a new commit in here. Now, that's good. This is on my repository, though. This isn't on the main GitHub one. So what I want to do is I want to go over to pull requests. Uh, um, I think I said GitHub one. I meant the Wagtail one. Uh, and I want to open up a new pull request. And what I'm going to do is, uh, oh, it already did it for me. So I want to select Wagtail slash Wagtail.io. That's my target. That's where I want to put the code on the master branch of Wagtail.io. And the one that I want to take the code from is going to be Caleb Tallin slash wagtail.io or your username slash wagtail.io. And then I want to select my branch. So if you're using a different branch, which is a better practice, honestly, I should have done that, but I didn't. Uh, you're going to select your branch. For me, I'm just going to select master. And I can scroll down to see these changes in here. And this is everything I saw in my git diff when I did git diff in my terminal, let's go ahead and create that pull request. Now at this point in time, you can give it a nice title, you can link it to uh, an open issue if there is an open issue, give it a nice description, be as descriptive as you possibly can. It's always helpful to the reviewers. Reviewers always appreciate if you write too much rather than too little. This way it just makes it a little bit easier and it closes that iteration gap, meaning if you gave me some code to review, I don't have to go and do a bunch of exploration. I can just read what you wanted to do or what you're trying to do. And, you know, ideally, I would have an idea of what you're fixing. Uh, and then I can just say, yep, it's either good or no, it needs a little bit of work. So let's go ahead and uh, create a pull request. Just pretend I wrote a bunch of stuff in here. Create a pull request. And this goes to github.com slash wagtail slash wagtail.io slash pull slash 82. And I have now opened up a pull request. There's three files in here. These files have been changed. I can go to the conversation. I can ask someone to review it for me. Uh, you probably won't see this green button down here. I have access to this repository, so I can merge this in if I wanted to. Uh, but you probably won't have that option. You'll need to wait for someone else to review the code. Now, someone else is likely going to take your code and take a look at it, go, okay, yeah, this looks good, this looks good, clone it down to their computer, run it, make sure everything is working as expected, and they're going to either give you a big old thumbs up and say, yep, this is good, and then they're going to hit the merge button, or they're going to say, mm, not quite, I think there's a better way to do this, let's maybe work on this a little bit together. Uh, so basically, the next step would be for someone to review this code, and I'm going to get someone else to review this code just because it's a good habit to be in to, you know, have some good peer review or code review, and then they're going to hit the merge pull request button if it gets approved. Now, here's the thing, not all pull requests get approved. And that's because what I'm doing here is what I think fixed the solution. Not the solution, uh, I think it fixed the problem. My solution is what I think the right one is. Unfortunately, it might not be. Maybe someone else has some deeper knowledge that I'm unaware of, 
and this is not the right solution, but it will point me in the right direction regardless. So that's really all there is to contributing to open source. Now, if you want, you can go to github.com slash Caleb Tallinn slash git essentials. And you can fork this repository, clone it down to your computer, make a bunch of changes, and then open up a pull request. And you can do exactly what I did in this video, but instead of working towards an actual open source project, you can just use this as an example. You don't have to worry about putting anything proper in here. You don't have to worry about making it right or wrong. You can just practice opening a pull request with this particular repository. It's a dummy repository. Have some fun with it. Try to break it. You can see there's 20 pull requests already open. There's a bunch of issues open. If you've never opened an issue, feel free to experiment there as well. But yeah, if you want to have a little bit of practice or get a little bit of practice with open source, by all means, what you can do is use this repository, Caleb Tallinn slash git dash essentials, open up a pull request and just practice. And when you're ready, when you're feeling a little more comfortable with it, you can contribute to an actual open source project. And then hopefully get your name on the contributor list and you can show employers that you've been working on an open source project. You know how to use Git. These are all good things for your skill sets. Now, at this point in time, there's nothing else for me to do. All I have to do is wait for someone to review this code and either give it a thumbs up or say, hey, it needs a little bit of work. And that's it. That's all there is to contributing to open source. Nice and easy, right? It's just a lot of small steps. So instead of like one big step, it's like 20 small steps. And we just have to remember the order. Now, if you don't remember the order, that's okay. Rewind the video and you can watch it over again and you can code along with me if you want. You can even just use this example repo here, the Git Essentials example repo, uh, and instead of using the Wagtail one, use this one. So you can always just experiment as well. Uh, you know, worst case scenario, you can always close your pull request as well. Um, no harm done, honestly. So it's probably a good idea for you to give this a shot. If you're not familiar with this, go ahead and give this a shot. Try it out. Uh, have some fun with it. And don't be, don't be scared to break anything. You're not going to be able to break anything because your code is not officially merged into the official code base yet. So it has to go through this stage of review first before someone else actually merges it in. And so even if you did introduce a bunch of breaking changes, that's okay. Someone else is going to review your code first. So don't be afraid to break anything. Thank you for watching this video. My name is Caleb Tallinn. If you want tutorials on learning Wagtail, you can always go to learnwagtail.com. You can always check out the docs for Wagtail as well, docs.wagtail.io, or come join us in the Wagtail Slack, wagtail.io slash Slack will get you there. And you can come join a community of, I don't know, there's a few thousand of us now uh, and ask questions, contribute in your own way, answer other people's questions and get involved in the community. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you around. Bye.